Just over 1,700 miles northwest of Perth lie the Cocos Keeling Islands. Annexed formally in 1857 as part of the British Dominions, the islands which were originally controlled from Ceylon now form one of the territories of the Commonwealth of Australia. Of great strategic and commercial value for over 50 years as the only wireless and cable base in the Indian Ocean, the islands now play a role of even greater significance. For that long airstrip below, one of the finest in the world, is the indispensable air link between Australia and South Africa. Twice a fortnight, Qantas planes on the Johannesburg run land here on West Island. Completed by the Royal Australian Air Force in 1952, the airfield now accommodates not only the Australian airline, but also a reciprocal South African flight operating twice a fortnight on the same route. Here at West Island is concentrated most of the activity connected with air operations. And here too, in the pleasant equable climate for which Cocos is famed, live the employees of the various bodies connected with the airport. A typical home. Airline administrative buildings. and the office of the Australian official representative who is responsible to the Minister for Territories. The present official representative, Mr J W Stokes, lives with his wife and family on West Island, but the area under his administration extends far across the miles of the huge lagoon around which are clustered the 26 islands forming the main atoll. Direction Island, four miles by sea from West Island. Twice a day, a barge runs between the two islands. Not as quick as the plane, but on a pleasant day, it's nice to take the long way round. Here on Direction Island, the original cable and wireless station was established in 1901. In an attempt to destroy this base, the German cruiser Emden raided the island in 1914, only to be destroyed by HMAS Sydney. The lines of communication have never since that time been directly threatened by enemy action. Today, the station links Australia with Singapore and South Africa. The residence of the officer in charge of the cable station has a well-established garden, and a gardener who likes to share the fruits of his labours. At the single men's quarters, Life's no joke at all. Just south of Direction Island, Home Island. On this island lived the Clooney's Ross family, hereditary owners of all land in the group. The family's connection with the islands dates back to 1827, when John Clooney's Ross, a Scottish sea captain, established a settlement and since the islands were uninhabited, brought in Malays to work on the natural coconut plantations. Today, Cocos Malays, working on the Clooney's Ross estate, carry on the industry founded over a hundred years ago. Travelling from island to island in boats built by themselves in the estate's small shipyard, they gather fallen coconuts, bringing them back to home island for drying. The sun-drying method of processing ensures a high standard for export. Some of the islanders clearly believe in throwing themselves into the job. In addition to a cash wage, they receive a free ration of coconuts for cooking and soap making. Home Island has its own housing development scheme. These older houses are giving way to sturdy concrete dwellings which are proof against the occasional violent cyclones. Life is happy on the island, particularly for the children. And regular inspections by a Commonwealth medical officer ensure that it's also a healthy life. 
A northern atoll lies 15 miles north of the main group. It was on this island of North Keeling that the German raider Emden was, according to the famous signal from HMAS Sydney, beached and done for. An incident which has now become part of naval history. There's a permanent reminder of the incident and of the island's association with Australia. From this building on the edge of the airstrip is controlled one of the island's most important services, air radio. Operating constantly, it ensures the maximum safety for aircraft landing in all weathers by day or by night. Here at Cocos is the only weather station in the whole expanse of the Indian Ocean. This equipment, which records temperature, pressure and humidity, reaches heights of 70,000 feet. The knowledge of prevailing wind currents is invaluable for aircraft facing the long ocean trip to and from the island. Once recorded by the Meteorological Office, Weather information is immediately available to ships and planes within reach. These facilities make Cocos a popular spot for the occasional caller. The visit of an RAAF Hercules is a reminder too of the strategic importance of the islands. For the aircraft in need of mechanical attention, a sure refuge with provision for remedying the fault. Takeoff time. Accurate weather information lightens the pilot's task considerably. The administration of these services brings its problems, and to assist with them, the little island council consisting of the official representative and the men in charge of the various services. Here, as elsewhere in Australian territories, particular attention is given by the Commonwealth to education. No tropical island indolence for these youngsters. The traditional after-school occupation for small boys is carried on with enthusiasm. Published fortnightly, the paper brings everyone up to date on local matters. For though to the outside world, the Cocos is mainly of strategic and commercial importance, to the residents it is an addition home a home with a generous provision for relaxation. The Britishers favorite game, played at Cocos with all the keenness of internationals. When it's summer all the year round, there's always an excuse for a day at the beach. Indeed, for the tiny children, Cocos is one long summer holiday. Excuse me, Mum. Must see the man about a close-up. Playing's all right for the kids, but the head of the house takes it all more seriously. The shallow, sloping beaches of the island are a favourite spot for the spear fishermen. The angler and the underwater cameraman are an unusual combination, and when there are sharks about, it's too good an opportunity to miss. A happy landing on the coral reef. And on the coral runway, yet another takeoff. Symbols of the Cocos Keeling Islands. A mere pinpoint in the vast Indian Ocean, but an invaluable link in Australia's communications with the outside world.